Yesterday, I showed you guys the Gopher protocol, and almost immediately, some of you started recommending in the comments section an even better protocol for me to check out called Gemini. So I've been looking at this a lot uh, last night and yesterday, and we can see here on their website that Gemini is the middle ground. Uh, it's basically the in-between uh, between the modern web, HTTP, and the Gopher protocol. But I don't think that Gemini is just the middle ground. I actually think that it's breaking new ground because even though it's similar to the old school Gopher protocol, that text only protocol that we looked at the other day, Gemini is a fairly new project that just started in June of 2019. So it's a minimal hypertext format which facilitates linking between files it's really kind of like a more modernized gopher. Uh, so there's no tracking on Gemini to show you some ads across different sites. That's you know another similarity that it has with gopher. In fact, there's no client side scripts at all. So you can't really do ads and tracking on Gemini, even if you wanted to. Uh, that's obviously gonna be very different from HTTP sites, which again, all the tracking and spookiness, it isn't inherent to the HTTP protocol. It's really just how some people design their sites, but boy, is there a lot of tracking out there on HTTP and the HTTPS internet. I think the majority of the websites out there uh, have ads and tracking on them. So let's talk about the protocol's design. Um, I'm gonna link this FAQ because this is obviously gonna go more in depth than this video will. So there are some differences between Gopher and Gemini, actually some improvements. Uh, one of Gopher's limitations is its character encoding. So it is a text-based protocol. Displaying text correctly is gonna be immensely important because, well, if the text isn't going to display right, what's even the point? Um, but you run into a lot of character encoding errors with non-ASCII character sets on Gopher, and Gemini doesn't really have that problem. Um, so it's not forced, the Gemini clients are not going to be forced to just try and guess or try to deal with those issues on their own like the Gopher ones. Uh, they also tend to not clearly distinguish successful transactions from failed ones over on Gopher. That's another problem that Gemini has pretty much solved. And Gemini is also designed with privacy in mind. Now, there's a few ways that they accomplish this. The first one is by just making the protocol very simple. So I've brought this up multiple times on this channel, uh, but no matter what technical project you're working on, whether it's developing a website, a protocol, or even if it's like not code-based, if it's a more mechanical feat, like you wanted to build your own car, it's always best to keep things as simple as possible and don't add in a whole mess of features that aren't going to be properly tested and properly thought out and have unforeseen consequences. And this is part of the reason that so much tracking exists in the HTTP space. It's not that HTTP is a malicious protocol that's designed to be spyware, but it doesn't really do much to prevent any spyware-like activity. So Gemini doesn't have all of that browser fingerprinting or super cookies. It also has mandatory TLS. So you're always going to be use an encrypted connection in Gemini space. Now, I know that the modern web, it has HTTPS, you know, almost every website has an HTTPS version of itself, but there's still some out there that don't. And there probably will be for a very long time because encryption isn't mandatory with HTTP. Uh, you also don't have to worry about using an older version of encryption with Gemini. Um, so Gemini, th this was actually something that was almost maybe a debate when it was being developed, whether it should force TLS version 1.3 or not. So it supports both TLS 1.2 and 1.3. Uh, because other TLS clients like LibreSSL and I think Bear SSL was the other one mentioned, they don't work with TLS 1.3. So they have that older version uh, just to make sure that there's still going to be compatibility with other people who aren't using OpenSSL. But again, that's still going to be better than HTTP where you have things like TLS downgrade attacks that can you know downgrade you to either TLS version 1.1 or even TLS version 1.0. You can't go lower than 1.2 with Gemini because the protocol doesn't support it. 
The Gemini specification is also not extensible, so we're probably not ever going to see an insecure version of Gemini. We're probably not gonna see a version that supports those lower versions of TLS uh, or any of those added features that I mentioned earlier that can reduce a user's privacy. So now that you're sold on the idea of Gemini space, how do you actually go there? Um, because just like Gopher, you can't simply paste in a Gemini link into your normal web browser. Like if I try to go to one here, you're gonna see that it's not gonna work. It's going to prompt me to open something else. So you're going to need a browser that can actually browse to Gemini sites. Well, I really should be calling them capsules because that's the proper term for Gemini sites. You got sites on HTTP, you've got gopher holes on gopher, and then you got capsules on Gemini. So the browser that I'm going to recommend to browse to these capsules is Caster. Uh, this is a graphical browser. Now, I know it might seem a little ridiculous to use a graphical browser for a text-based protocol. There are terminal-based Gemini browsers out there. I just don't have any installed right now. Uh, so Caster, it's written in Rust with GTK, so it's probably gonna be most similar to Firefox. Um, and then to install it, uh, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you have the dependencies. So go ahead and install these if you don't already. And you can just download this. You can treat this pretty much like a GitHub link, just git clone uh, into your GitHub directory or whatever directory you wanna build it from. And then you want to run make, sudo make install. And then you will have caster available from your uh, application launcher, or you can just launch it directly from the terminal. And this is what we get. So, you know, nothing flashy, just a regular graphical web browser. And let's go to that site we were trying to go to before. This is actually a Gemini space search engine. Uh, so let's test it out. Let's search for something. And so you have the search query that pops up here. Let's look up Linux. Let's see what is there related to Linux. Quite a bit, you know, not a surprise that the Linux folks are on Gemini. Uh, let's go to this capsule here. Yeah, so it looks like this, um, this might be somebody's personal site here. Uh, install OpenBSD. This is actually something that I've been looking at a little bit too. So we've got some instructions for installing OpenBSD here. Look at that. Almost looks like it's easier than Arch. Maybe it is, I haven't tried BSD yet. Um, oh, let's go to this site. So I just have a few different ones I wanted to show you guys, some kind of interesting Gemini sites. Uh, so this is a tic-tac-toe game. Now, maybe your mind is blown. You're like, whoa, you know, how is there something that's interactive? Like here, I can, um, I think it makes me X's, right? Yeah, so see, I can fill it in. How on earth could it possibly be doing this without JavaScript? Well, it does have server-side scripting, right? So this is basically uh, running on the back end of whatever you know server is hosting the site or showing me the site, uh, but nothing is actually running on my computer, right? I'm just sending the information over to them and then they are uh, updating this board here. Uh, so let's try another move. Let's go for five to block them off. And he didn't even try to block me over at seven. So I'm just gonna take that for the win. And why don't we try it one more time? Maybe give the computer another chance to try and win. Um, I'm gonna go for three, it worked last time. He's gonna do the exact same thing, huh? <laughs> All right, maybe the back end isn't as intelligent as uh, you know some other like JavaScript, uh, tic-tac-toe front end, but hey, it's more secure and it's less spooky because it's not running on my machine. Let's try one more site. So this is supposed to be a uh, weather report site. All right, and so it wants us to enter, I think a zip code. So let's try this one. That's a zip code for Nashua. Um, Okay, let's try it with zip code again. Hmm, maybe this one doesn't work. Okay, so this site appears to not be working. Uh, tried a diff couple different zip codes, 
Probably should have tested it out a bit more before I started recording, but whatever. Um, you can also get news through Gemini. So there's a few different news feeds here at this site. Of course, there's gonna be other ones that are out there. This is just one that I found. Uh, so you got a few different selections here, NPR, CSM, CNN. Too bad they don't have better selections. Uh, but yeah, you can just like, click on that and uh, gives you the text. Cause again, that's all you really need, right? Like you don't need a picture of the news article in, you know, they could still link pictures, uh, but you generally don't need one. I mean, a lot of the time, if you read articles on the regular internet, half the time the pictures aren't even really relevant to uh, the article or it's something that's out of context. Uh, so let's go back to our search engine. Um, actually, I think I'll show you some pictures uh, because just to show you how it works. So basically, Gemini is going to be following the Unix philosophy a bit more closely. And uh, well, I'll just demonstrate that to you. So photos. Basically, it's not going to display pictures inside of your browser because that's you know anti unix philosophy right like you don't want one program that does everything you know that's the whole reason why modern browsers are bloat and the modern web is bloat because it's trying to do everything so uh we'll just find like uh i don't know we'll go here color photography so you see that we have some files here some jpegs and when i click on them it opens inside of another application, my image viewer, X viewer here. And that's kind of how it should work if you ask me. There's no reason to try and display that for my browser to try and be an image viewer. It's not going to be an image viewer better than a proper image viewer. Uh, not to mention that it might display images in a way that I don't like. You know, that's the whole reason in choosing an image viewer that you actually enjoy. This looks pretty good. Uh, so yeah, you can do images this way. You could even do video this way as well. So you know, I've done videos where I showed you guys how you can play stream videos from YouTube or library, BitChute, wherever, into MPV. You could literally just have MPV links here. Uh, maybe you could have a picture next to it. So like if you want to see the thumbnail, you could just click on something like that and be like, oh, this is the thumbnail. And then copy the link, pull up MPV and play it. And there you go. You've got, a, you're browsing the way that Unix intended to. So that's gonna be it for Gemini. I'll leave uh, links below to Caster, uh, the actual Gemini project websites that you guys can read up more about it and maybe some of these cool sites that I found. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's any other cool Gemini sites you found. Uh, YouTube might mark them as spam, but don't worry, I'll unmark it. This will be one of the times that we're going to allow link sharing because usually YouTube doesn't like that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.